Welcome to another fascinating journey through the stories of the Bible. Today, let's dive into the captivating tale of Elisha, a prophet from the Old Testament. Picture a time when God was deeply involved with the people and leaders of ancient Israel, guiding them through prophets like Elisha. Now, Elisha was quite special. He inherited a double portion of the spirit of Elijah, another renowned prophet. His mission? To steer Israel back on track with religious reforms. He was like a beacon of peace and healing in turbulent times. Oh, and let's ponder over Elisha's name for a moment. It's believed to mean God is salvation a fitting name for someone destined to bring God's message to the people. Imagine this. Around 800 BC, Elisha was on a divine mission alongside around 30 other prophets sent by God to both the northern and southern kingdoms of Israel and Judah. Their goal? To steer people away from idolatry and sin. So, What's the significance of Elisha receiving a double portion of Elijah's spirit? It symbolizes his extraordinary connection with God and his authority as a prophet. Before we wrap up a little plea from me, if you enjoy these insights, do subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Without further delay, Let's watch a video about young Alicia. God, who knows all secrets, had already told Elijah that there were 7,000 people in Israel who hadn't bowed down to Baal during a tough time towards the end of Elijah's ministry. God told Elijah to choose a young man named Elisha as his successor, Elisha from Abel Meola in the Jordan Valley would later become known for his miracles and messages of peace and healing. Starting as a student, Elisha was led by God to find his successor. Elijah found Elisha plowing in a field and placed his cloak on Elisha's shoulders, symbolizing that he was the chosen prophet. Without hesitation, Elisha accepted the call to serve, leaving behind his family and home for a life that would require personal sacrifice. He started his ministry as Elijah's apprentice and helper, demonstrating loyalty through small acts like serving water to Elijah. Elisha learned from Elijah, gradually preparing for the role he would eventually take on alone. The Bible mentions Elijah and Elisha visiting religious training centers in Israel, where groups of men called the Sons of the Prophets gathered. Towards the end of Elijah's ministry, they visited three of these schools in Gilgal, Bethel, and Jericho. During this time, Elisha faced tests of faith and determination. Despite being encouraged to turn back, he persisted, just as he had learned perseverance during his years of plowing. Now engaged in a larger mission, he remained focused and undeterred. When Elijah realized his ministry was ending and Elisha would succeed him, he asked Elisha what he wanted before he departed. Elisha requested a double portion of Elijah's spirit, which symbolized the inheritance of a firstborn son. He wanted to be recognized as Elijah's spiritual heir, not seeking worldly recognition or position. His true desire was to receive a greater measure of the Holy Spirit that had empowered Elijah's prophetic ministry. Elisha understood that he needed God's Holy Spirit to face the challenges ahead. When he asked Elijah for a double portion of his spirit, Elijah said it was a difficult request, but agreed, stating that if Elisha saw him being taken to heaven, his wish would be granted. 
As they were walking and talking, a fiery chariot with horses appeared and separated them. Elijah was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind, and Elisha witnessed this miraculous event, exclaiming in awe at the sight. This was a clear sign that Elisha's request was granted. After Elijah's departure, Elisha picked up Elijah's mantle, which had fallen from him. This cloak, which Elijah had used earlier that day to part the waters of the Jordan River, symbolized the transfer of prophetic authority to Elisha. Elisha then approached the Jordan River, asking for the presence of the Lord God of Elia. Mirroring Elia's earlier miracle, he struck the water with the mantle, and the river parted, allowing him to cross. This act confirmed that the spirit of Elijah rested on Elisha. The sons of the prophets, seeing this, recognized that Elisha had indeed received the spirit of Elijah and showed him respect. Elisha's prophetic ministry, marked by numerous miracles and messages from God, would last about 50 years, during which he continued the legacy of his mentor, Elijah. During the reigns of four kings of Israel, Jehoram, Jehu, Joaz, and Joash, Elisha's ministry took a different direction from Elijah's in some ways. While Elijah boldly delivered messages of condemnation and judgment to the king and the people, urging them to turn away from sin, Elisha's ministry built upon Elijah's work. He focused on teaching the people about God's ways, emphasizing spiritual education in the schools of the prophets. Throughout his effective years of service, Elisha continued to emphasize the importance of understanding Elijah's prophetic role. Elisha's ministry was characterized by miracles, particularly in the realm of healing and restoration. He brought joy to people through God's miraculous interventions, impacting many lives positively across Israel. One notable instance was when he healed a contaminated water source near Jericho. This spring had become toxic, causing harm to those who drank from it and affecting the surrounding foliage. Responding to a complaint, Elisha used a bowl and salt to cleanse the water. Through this symbolic act, God miraculously purified the poisoned water declaring through Elisha that it would no longer cause death or barrenness. The second miracle performed by Elisha involved providing aid to a family facing financial hardship. A widow, whose husband had been a student at a religious center and died during a marriage ceremony, was left in severe poverty. Her only asset was a jar of oil, and with two sons to care for, she was in despair, fearing her children might be taken away to pay off her debts. Seeking Elisha's help, the widow was instructed to gather as many empty jars as she could from her neighbors. Elisha promised a miracle. Her single jar of oil would fill all the borrowed jars to the brim. This act of faith led to the miraculous multiplication of the oil. The widow was then able to sell the oil, pay off her debts, and sustain her family on the earnings. Elisha also performed miracles for a childless couple in Shunem, a place he often visited because of their hospitality. Elisha prophesied that the couple would have a son who would bring them immense joy. However, joy turned to despair when the boy later fell ill and died. The mother sought Elisha's help, and through his prayers to God, Elisha brought the boy back to life, demonstrating the power of faith and the divine intervention of God through his prophets. Elisha's ministry was marked by a series of remarkable miracles 
that showcased the power of God. Among these was the healing of Naaman, a man afflicted with leprosy. Elisha instructed Naaman to wash himself seven times in the Jordan River, which, despite its muddy waters, was the setting for Naaman's miraculous cure. This act of faith led to his complete healing, illustrating the power of obedience to God's commands. Elisha also performed miracles reminiscent of those later performed by Jesus, such as multiplying loaves of bread to feed many people. Another notable event was when 42 boys mocked Elisha for his baldness, and he cursed them. Consequently, two bears emerged from the woods and mauled the boys, a stern warning against disrespecting God's prophet. Elisha even made an iron axe head float on water, demonstrating God's dominion over physical laws. These miracles, along with many others not mentioned here, underscore the extraordinary ministry of Elisha, through which God manifested his power and provision. Towards the end of his life, Elisha fell ill. King Jehoash of Israel, recognizing Elisha's importance to the nation as a spiritual leader, visited him. In a moment of deep emotion, the king cried over the dying prophet, echoing the words Elisha had once cried over Elijah. Elisha then instructed Jehoash in a symbolic act of shooting an arrow and striking the ground with arrows, predicting victory over Aram, but expressing disappointment that Jehoash's actions indicated limited success. After Elisha's death and burial, another miracle occurred. During a burial ceremony, when raiders were spotted, mourners hastily threw a man's body into Elisha's tomb. Upon touching Elisha's bones, the man was miraculously revived, a testament to the enduring power of God's servant even after his death. Elisha's life and the miracles associated with him highlight a profound legacy of faith, obedience, and the manifestation of divine power. As we come to the end of our journey through the remarkable life of Elisha, we are left with a legacy filled with miracles, faith, and the transformative power of God. Elisha's humble beginnings as a disciple transformed into a revered prophet, serving as an inspiration to all. His story reminds us of the importance of faith, commitment, and the enduring influence of God's Spirit in our lives. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening exploration through the stories of the Old Testament. If you found this video insightful, Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more biblical explorations. Until the next episode, may God's blessings be with you. Our journey concludes here, but we'd love to hear your thoughts on Elisha's story in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.